Hi everybody. Today, as I showed you in the clip at the beginning, is a very snowy and cold day. And so we're actually going to save some seeds. Um, I've got a few different squashes and I've got all those beans that we picked together. And we're going to go ahead and get those saved up so we can plant them next year. These are things that we're gonna save seed with. Um, one of the really nice things I like about winter squash is that you don't have to can it to preserve it because it actually will preserve itself. It will get a really thick rind on it and it will last for months and months without having to can it or anything. I do have this cute little baby pumpkin here. Um, it's just a de decorative pumpkin, but I really like the look of it. So I'm gonna save seed from it and see if I can get it to, to get it to grow true to this particular type. And then I've got this big Hubbard. I'm not actually gonna be cutting it up today, but I am gonna be cutting up this little pumpkin and I'm gonna be, this is actually a zucchini over here. Now to save seed from a zucchini, you actually have to let them grow until they are fully mature. Um, zucchini, we actually usually will harvest when they're young and tender. And so you have to let them grow to complete maturity before you can harvest them if you want to save the seeds from them. And then I've also got some of these okra pods that I'm gonna see if I got any seeds from. That I, I'm gonna see if I got any seeds to mature in those. Um, I planted them really late and just from seeds, so I'm not sure if I will or not, but it's okay if I don't, because I do have more seeds from those. And then I also have this bucket here and then another bucket of some different varieties of shelling beans. So this here is Cherokee Trail of Tears. And then I also have just the, the Blue Lake Pole Bean in here as well. And those seeds are different colors, so I'll know the difference. In my other bucket are my bush beans, and I have Blue Lake Bush, and I also have Jacob's Cattle Beans in there, and we'll be shelling those together. And then we're gonna cut up this zucchini and this little teeny pumpkin. Um, but harvesting seeding from winter squash or summer squash, once it's mature, is the same. You cut it open and you scrape the seeds out, and you do the same process, but they are just different sizes and shapes. So like your butternut, the seed pod is actually only in this section, but your acorn squash, if you cut it in half, it's all in the middle and it's the same with this. This is more like when you cut open your zucchini and the seeds are in it, it's actually got up the whole length, but we'll show you that when we get there. And this hover squash, I'm not gonna cut today because this is actually one of your longest storing squash. So I'm actually not gonna save the seeds until I actually go to use this because it stores so well. This will probably be one of the last squash that I use just because it lasts for so long that you want to use up your other squash that go bad sooner and then use your longer storing squash. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at these okra here. And as I said, they didn't get a chance to dry out on the plant. Hopefully they will have dried enough. And I have never saved, saved seeds from these before. I've never grown them before. But it looks like there's a few in here that look good. Some of them have a little bit of mold. And if there's any mold on there, you don't want to keep those. So it looks like we got a few at least that didn't have any mold on them. Well, those I think got a little too wet. So I think all we're going to get is this little bit. But if I had gotten them before it had rained on them so that the pods were at least not wet when I brought them in, I think I would have gotten all these seeds. But we did get a few. Thank you, sweetheart. We're not going to do that one. It's just the moldiest. So I got a few seeds that I'm going to save from that. I have never grown okra before, so this was an experiment. So we're just going to see how it goes. All right. So because those did have some mold on them, I cleaned my board and my knife and everything back up. I probably should have done them at the end, but like I said, I haven't ever done them before, so I was excited to do those. So we did them first, and we're going to do this little pumpkin. And I'm gonna just cut it in half now for squash and that zucchini that has 
is fully mature, you're gonna want a really sharp knife and be very careful with your fingers because they are very hard to cut through. And you just wanna make sure to always know where your fingers are so they are out of the way. Perfect. See that? And so all squash, winter, summer, are the same when you're saving seeds. You cut them open. What you wanna do is you scoop them out, you rinse them off real good, and then you lay them out. And you can lay them out on paper towel, parchment paper, um, just something that they won't stick to. Um, if you have any china um, or gla like glass plates work really well. Um, and you just scoop it out. And you see how it's kind of stringy. This is actually not as bad as like a jack-o'-lantern type pumpkin um, in terms of its gooiness. But you just scoop those seeds right out. And then I will package these together because they all came from the same fruit. And I will plant one or two next year. And if the plant breeds true and makes pumpkins that look like this that I can tell they didn't somehow get cross-pollinated then I will write on this bag that they um, have been tested or that I've tested them I just put a check mark on it and that means to me that's my system but that means to me that these will be what they're supposed to be. They haven't been accidentally cross-pollinated with something else and look different. So go ahead and get these rinsed. Stick them in this. All right. And I just gave them a quick rinse. I actually before have done them where I haven't even rinsed them at all. But if you want them to just be a little bit cleaner, then I recommend rinsing them. And again, it does cut down on that risk of them molding if you rinse them off first. And then what you're gonna do is make sure and get all that little bits of pulp out. I mean, some is okay, but like these bigger hunks, I wanted to get those out. And then there is a bunch of those little pumpkin seeds. And I'm gonna use paper towels because I've got some on hand. Now, if this was a acorn squash, butternut squash, any of those squash that you normally, I mean, you could eat this. It's just not bred to be as tasty. So it probably wouldn't has, have as good a flavor. But if you had an acorn squash that you had just done this with, eat it. That's one nice thing about the squash type things is those winter squash are meant to be eaten when they are fully ripe, which means you cut them open and you scoop the seeds out, you get two products. You get your seeds and you get your flesh that you get to actually eat. Now, one of the reasons I prefer to put my seeds on a paper towel and not just on the plate is that I feel like with that paper towel under there, it helps the airflow. And also, if any of the paper towel gets stuck on there, it's fine to plant it because it will just decompose. And then you wanna spread them out to be a single layer. Now some of these I know aren't gonna be viable seeds because I can just tell by the size of them, but I'll let them all dry together. The other reason that I like paper towels is you can write on it. So I can write a deco, the deco pumpkin. I am actually not sure what variety this is. Um, I just like it, so I'm going to keep it and see if it will be true for me next year. Now we are gonna do this big zucchini. And I haven't washed it or anything because I'm not, the zucchini, this you wouldn't wanna eat because it is a summer squash. I mean, you could eat it if, if you really needed to eat something, you could eat this, but it will not taste as nice as it does when it's in the immature phase, which is why we eat them at that point. But so I'm actually just going to, this is gonna be really hard. So again, sharp knife and always know where your fingers are. And that's what you're looking for right there. 
As I said, one thing about the zucchini is they're such an odd shape that I prefer just to do that. And I'm not eating this, so I'm not as worried about um, how it will fit and roast on my roaster pan like if I was doing um, banana squash or something like that. Because if I was doing that, then I'd want to cut it so it would lay nice on my thing and have a nice edge and all that. But... This, all I'm after is the seeds. And as you can already see, and I'm not even halfway done, there are a lot of seeds in pumpkin and winter squash type and summer squash type plants, which is fantastic because each of these seeds has the potential to give you a whole nother round of food. It's a very, very good invest, investment in your time because they are so productive. Like anybody who, anybody who grows zucchini knows that you have a few plants and you're trying to give away zucchini all summer because they are just so productive. And they just give you so much food. And all you have to do is save one and you have a resupply for the next year. And when you, when you choose the one you wanna save, make sure it's from a healthy, healthy plant that gave you a lot of what you wanted. You always wanna pick the healthiest plants, the most productive plants to propagate. So we will again rinse and then I like to dry them off a little and then put them on my paper towel and we will label it and go on to the next one. Now all this waste is not waste. What you wanna do is you wanna give it to your chickens. I actually cut a few pieces off this little pumpkin and let my dog have it. Um, but your chickens will love this. They will love the seeds, they will love the pulp, they will love the skins. Um, they actually, my chickens would eat um, the zucchini leaves as well or squash leaves too um in the in the summer it's not they're all dead now but you want to you want to give this to them if you had pigs i don't have pigs but if you had pigs your pigs could eat it um but pumpkin is actually a really good dewormer um natural dewormer so it's good for them and they love it blue lake pole beans and cherokee trail tears and they are a different color and how you do beans is you let them dry, again, preferably on your vine. Um, if you are going to be having a, a wet spell come through, you're gonna to wanna to pick them um, because you want them to get this leathery dry before you shell them. And then you just open them up. And there's your beans. So those are the trelateers, and then this are my blue lake pole. Now this is a little more time consuming simply because you have to open them all and get all the individual seeds out, but it is definitely worth it to have and these can be used as either your seed bean for next year, which this is gonna be for me. I planted these to be seed beans. Um, as I said in that garden that I have specified for beans. Beans don't cross pollinate as readily. So these are actually in the same little archway trellis area, but they were a little bit apart from each other and so they will be fine. And they, they're looking really nice. And I just have two mason jars here that I'm going to put the different kinds in. And we're just going to go ahead and shell these. That is one tip is shell them into a little bowl. 
then they don't slide around as much and get away. decoration pumpkin we've got that bush zucchini we got about a cup of Cherokee trail tears a cup about of the Jacobs cattle and then probably it's more like a quarter of a cup of each the bush and full lake and then those little okra seeds that we're gonna try out now I just love both of these because they are just so pretty. It's kind of hard to see with the reflection, but the color of these Cherokee Trelateers is so pretty. It's just, it's not black, it's like purple almost. And then these are just fun. I mean, those Jacob's Cow are just fun. And you can see why they're called Jacob's Cow because they look like little spotted cows. And these beans, I am saving for seed. And that's what I planted those plants for. But the reason I did it so that I could get these big bags and plant lots rather than just a little packet. And then you can plant them and use them as dry beans. So like these I would probably just use in place of any black beans that I had. And then these ones are more of like a kidney bean. And of course these are like a white navy type bean and I also think it's funny that even though these are both blue lake the bush bean variety versus the pole bean you can see the size of the seeds is different wow. that's one of the I don't know I just find collecting seed and that sort of stuff very interesting and fun because you just those kind of just weird little interesting things pop out when you're doing a little bit more than just buying starts and planting starts and then eating the fruit and then being done so when you go a little deeper you get to learn more interesting and fun things and these are actually like i said i would use them as like a kidney type bean and they're really smooth the texture when you cook them is really smooth and like um creamy is what you would say um and these of course are delicious as well but um, as I said, I just planted these, all four of these specifically for the seed. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share, and we will see you next time.